So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer. Today we remember Chad. Um, this is going back quite a way in time to the 600s. I have a fondness for, for Chad simply because I've got a good friend who is the vicar of St. Chad's up in Sheffield. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't know much about Chad other than what I've uh, read this morning, which is to tell us that he was a pupil of Aidan, who established Christianity in Northumbria during the reign of King Oswald. Uh, he spent a bit of time with Aidan, he and his brother, um, at the monastery at Lindisfarne. Has anyone been to Lindisfarne? Yeah. Wonderful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's amazing to think that Aidan and, and Chad were there in the 600s, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, he succeeded his brother as abbot at Lastingham in the North York Moors. Um, but then King Osri consecrated him as a bishop um, in the place of someone else who'd gone to France and was taking a long time coming back. Um, and King Osri was getting impatient with that. So it was a slightly irregular consecration. And uh, eventually this chap did come back and uh, Chad gave up his position. But later he was consecrated again, this time as Bishop of Mercia. And he settled at Litchfield and uh, made Litchfield an ecclesiastical centre. And, and he established a monastery at Barrow and finally died of the plague in 672. Mm. So they, that's all I can tell you about Chad. Anyone else uh, got anything on, on Chad? No. No. no, I mean, it was a really a time when when Celtic Christianity, I think, was very much uh, part of the tradition, particularly in, in those regions. And Roman Christianity was just sort of getting going in the south. Um, but um, yeah, I wonder what it was like being in Northumbria in the six hundreds. It's a Celtic Christian. I really, you know. Muddy. Muddy. <laughs> cold, cold, I think. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful as well. But beautiful okay. as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Celts had such a really powerful and earthy spirituality. Yeah? My lot. And mine, John. <laughs> exactly. We were there. We were there. Absolutely. We were there, There's a lot to learn from the Celtic tradition, really. You know, they. Uh... Great. Okay, well, let's remember Chad today. Let's get started then on our service. O oh Lord, open our lips. Our and our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love. According, according to your, to your judgment, judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance as we rejoice in the gift of your saving help. Sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, and be, blessed God be God forever. forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, um, let's read our psalm, shall we? Okay, it's Psalm... 50 and um Bisola, would you like to help me with that well I, I think you need to unmute yourself yeah thank you the lord the most mighty god has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting out of zion perfect in beauty god shines forth our god comes and will not keep silence 
consuming fire goes out before him and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, your God. I will not reprove you of your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds. Cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that fills it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and fulfill your vows to God most I. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you shall honour me. But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? since you refuse to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you made friends with him, and you threw in your lot with adulterers. I have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have you done, and should I keep silence, did you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well, lest I tear you apart, and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and, the Son, and, the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 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 Hello, Paul. Welcome. Good morning, Martin. Sorry to be late, darling. Um, that's all right. That's all right. You're welcome. Um, so, yes, a psalm about judgment, really. We can't just expect to go about mm. doing terrible things and not pay the price mm. of that, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. That's... Any thoughts about this song? <coughs> you know, it's 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 not what we do on the outside; it's what's going on in deep God. down. God, uh, yeah. Whether we are truly faithful to God in, <coughs> in how we live our lives, yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows how great God is. Saying in you know the verse eleven where He says, "I know every bird of the mountains." Oh yes. And the insects of the field is mine. Yeah. But all the beasts of the forest are mine. The cattle upon a thousand hills. That's a beautiful expression, isn't it? Exactly. The cattle upon a thousand hills. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's read, read a bit more of Jeremiah. Um, uh, Leslie, do you want to read that for us? Right. At that time, says the Lord, the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its officials, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be brought out of their tombs, and they shall be spread before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven which they have loved and served, which they have followed, and which they have inquired of and worshipped. And they shall not be gathered or buried. They shall be like dung on the surface of the ground. Death shall be preferred to life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, when people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They have held fast to deceit. They have refused to return. 
I have given heed and listened, but they do not speak honestly. No one repents of wickedness, saying, what have I done? All of them turn to their own course, like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows its times, and the turtle dove, swallow and crane observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us when in fact the false pen of the scribe has made it into They shall be dismayed and taken since they have rejected the word of the Lord. What wisdom is in them? Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors because from the least to the greatest Everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They acted shamefully. They committed abomination, yet they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time when I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to gather them, says the Lord. There are no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. Even the leaves are withered, and what I gave them has passed away from them. Why do we sit still? Gather together, let us go into the fortified cities and perish there. For the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We look for peace, but find no good, for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. Okay, well, as we know, this prophet Jeremiah is warning the people of the consequences of their unfaithfulness, of their evil doing. And it's all going to come to some calamity. Yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Perhaps we've got something a bit more hopeful in the gospel. <laughs> uh, all right, let's scroll down. Uh, well, sorry, uh, Martin. I mean, it's surprising that all God wanted of them was for them to come back to him. Yes, there is a yearning, isn't there? In there, there's a yeah, yearning. But rather, they said they want to go and die. Yeah. Of course, there's there's a there's a note of extreme sadness, isn't there, in the tone of God? Like I wanted, mm-hmm. what does it say? Um, I wanted <coughs> grapes or whatever. I wanted to gather them. Exactly, the Lord. Mm-hmm. But there are no grapes on the vine or figs on the fig tree. And what I gave them has passed away from them. Yeah. yeah. He said, when people fall, do they not get up again? If mm-hmm. they go astray, do they not turn back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all he expected was that he needed them just to turn back to him. Indeed. Indeed. Or rather, they said, our God had doomed us to perish. And for them, you know, they need to go and die. Let's go to the fortified cities and perish there. Yeah, yeah. And it's still happening to, I mean, I believe that that's why most people would not turn back to God. They believe that maybe they've sinned so much and that God will not be able to forgive them. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Yeah, but that's never the case, is it? No. So therefore, it's actually an encouraging and uplifting piece. Yeah, it is. Yes. All right, let's read the passage from John. Um, I can't resist asking John to read John. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Read your bit. I was designed to do this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, 
you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the At Capernaum, yeah. Thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> short passage following on from what we read yesterday, those of us who were here yesterday, talking about um, Jesus saying, you know, I am the bread of heaven. Um, I'm the spiritual bread, the equivalent of the manna that was given in the wilderness. But this, this, this bread, if you eat from me, you will have eternal life. And um, we said how it was pointing forward to communion, really, to, to for, pointing forward to really what he would do on the last, at the Last Supper, mm. um, when he would break bread and and tell them to remember when they ate it, uh, him and, and, and for this to be for them, his body. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, again, this is the second part of that passage and it's saying, it's, yeah, it's pointing forward to how Jesus will die, but he will live on and, and we can, experience where well, we can really how we can um experience that through the sacramental nature of the the the, the bread when we take it uh representing jesus living living in us abiding in us um mm. So we've been missing communion quite a lot, haven't we? Mm. But we do have an in-person service. Well, we actually have one tomorrow um, at midday because we were doing on Wednesday, but also on Sunday now at 10 um, so that we will be able to eat the bread again um, if we observe our COVID safety arrangements. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Any thoughts about this passage? Well, only in the sense that you can understand why people thought he was talking a load of nonsense. Because yes. for someone to sort of say, if you eat my flesh and drink my yes. yes. It would have seemed... we, have, we have the advantage of hindsight and explanation. But yes, Elizabeth. Then, it must have been odd. What is this man talking about? Yes, yes. They would have obviously made the connection with the bread of heaven, the manna. Yeah. So he's working with that imagery, which would have been very familiar to them. This, this great blessing in the wilderness, which saved the Israelites' lives because they were starving. Yeah. And this bread of heaven came and saved them and rescued them, saved their lives. So he's kind of like speaking into all that, isn't he? Saying, look, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I'm going to do that for you again. You're not actually physically starving, but you're spiritually starving. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, and you need just, you need rescuing just as much as your ancestors. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, again, we have the advantage of a bit of hindsight and a bit of, <clears throat> whereas for them, they'd forgotten all that. They'd, discarded as long as we keep doing all the the day-to-day -day ritual we'll be saved yes the actual true emphasis like we were reading from jeremiah mm. just now it is that god wants them to to worship him heart soul and mind and then and they're just doing the physical just and hoping that will be enough Mm. Mm. 
and yeah. that's something for us to remember. Well, Just indeed. Physical well, is, yeah. is mm. We are living it out in our day-to-day -day lives, Monday to Saturday, as well as what we do on Sundays. We're living it out. We're, God's giving us opportunities every day to live it out and we're embracing it that's mm. what we're called to do that's what it means to be a disciple it doesn't mean just pitch up on sundays it means you know do crazy things all week the people will say why why is she doing that why is he doing this you know mm. we're called to yeah be crazy christians <laughs> well at least you can get away with it martin because you have a costume. No, Anne. <laughs> You've got, You've got an outfit to go with it. You need to be a crazy So people don't too. ask you why. <laughs> you need to be a crazy person. Oh, yeah, because well, you wear a funny collar. Mm. Mm. So they don't they, they just think oh she's a mad vicar <laughs> being a Christian. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pray. Let's pray. Where's my list? Oh, what have I done with my list? Oops. Um, where is my prayer list on? Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, let's pray. Lord, uh, we thank you for Jesus, the bread of life. And uh, we thank you that we are able to gather again in person, small services, to receive communion together. And we pray that whether we do that or not, uh, that God, you will, uh, through Jesus, abide in us and that we will um, live as according to your, your, your calling on our lives every day er, in everything that we do and that people will look at us and, and be surprised and amazed as people, when they looked at you, were surprised and amazed. Um, at the things you did, at the things you said, at the way you were. And, and that, that's for us too, to rise to that challenge and opportunity. So Lord, uh, for your Holy Spirit to be at work in our, all of our lives today. Certainly not just uh, those of us wearing a clerical collar. But it's uh, for all of us, for every one of your disciples, this wonderful privilege to serve you. So Lord, we do lift to you uh, all those who've asked for prayer by name. Um, we're glad and thankful that Jenny's with us today. We continue to pray for her, uh, for her healing. Lord, also for Christopher and Vivian Golis, Sati Ganani, Evelyn Hanna, Sean Hunt, Yaz Irani, Pete Jadhav, Amelia Carmock, Maureen Kelly, Anna Lee, Eloise Lybrand, Joan Martinez, John Oborn, Susan Rigby, Betty Seaman, Helen Sylvester and Daryl Warren. Also, Lord, for Dia Sharma, Sarah Tonks, John Wharton. Please, Lord, bring healing, bring comfort and, and, and protect all these people from pain. Um, bring them hope and encouragement. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear yeah, Lord, thank you for your love and thank you for mm. a new day that you have given us to experience your wonderful blessings. Thank you, Lord, that we have reminders in your word of your constant love for us. Lord, this morning we just want to acknowledge your love and to, to thank you and to praise you. Bless each of us on this work, oh Lord. And Lord, we, we pray that we live our lives in such a way that we reflect your grace and your abundant love for us. Be with us as we go to this day. These mercies I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you, Lord, that you are with us every day, step by step. Be with each of us today on whatever journeys we must face. Yes. If they have difficult moments, Lord, we know that you are beside us and that you will see us through. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord.
Amen. I continue to pray for those who are preparing for confirmation, for Jojo and Anna and Jonathan, for Sue and Nicholas and Gwen, and also for Louise and Amy. Lord, for your spirit to be at work, encouraging new disciples, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Almighty God, from the first fruits of the English nation who turned to Christ, you called your servant Chad to be an evangelist and bishop of his own people. Give us grace so to follow his peaceable nature, humble spirit and prayerful life that we may truly commend to others the faith which we ourselves profess through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Using the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer, trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. He is not made to be tempted, but deliver us from evil. Thy name is the kingdom, power and the power forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, lovely to see all you beautiful people. Thank you for coming. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow or later today. Or, I mean, some of you hopefully come to Bible Reading Group in half an hour. Time to have a cup of tea and join us. Uh, but I'll see you soon, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Nice. See you later. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 B